All right, good Thursday morning, everyone. It is time to talk about the markets with Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And Jim, let's start with your reaction to all the Fed news from yesterday. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, I'm not saying it's much to do about nothing because anytime you get a rate hike, that's not, uh, especially after it's such a low rate. Um, but I do think that we overly parsed what uh, what Janet Yellen is trying to do. I think Janet Yellen, um, while I disagree with their strategy, she should be selling bonds as there's a huge appetite for them right now mm. and not buying, she should be selling furiously. Um, but I do think that what she's doing is just trying to get us so that when you have the kind of unemployment rate that we have, I mean, this jobless claims today, best in the 70s, then you really don't have to worry about knocking the economy off by raising rates a little. We want to get back to a more normalized rate. We're not in an emergency, an emergency way at all. I think it's a very good time. Not a great time. If it was a great time, then she would be way behind the curve. She'd have to be taking half point, half point steps. She wants to avoid having to take half point steps by taking these quarter point steps. Uh, but I think that, in essence, the, the market um, is spending too much time looking at how stocks went down and then coming up a thesis. When I did a piece of Real Money today saying, listen, this is part of an ongoing rotation. It started last Friday. It had been disguised by the decline in oil, but this rotation is just right in sync with what happened Friday. And it was interrupted by too much aggressive FANG buying on Monday and Tuesday. So now the FANG stocks have to settle in. We're getting the traditional downgrades uh, that I would expect at this point in the cycle. But the one thing I point out is that none of that has to do with Yellen. But we want to shoehorn Yellen in. We always want to blame the Fed. And yet the Fed has been so good at not really being part of the picture. I say take the Fed out and look at what's happening with the companies not relating to the Fed. And you'll see that people are selling highly valued stocks to get into lower value stocks. Right, you mentioned FANG stocks and downgrades. What did you make of Canaccord's downgrade of Alphabet? Okay, well, you know what? You, you go over that. That's a generic downgrade. Uh, margins might be under pressure. Or the stock va the valuation is stretched. That's someone who just says, you know what? I can make a call. Uh, here in the mid 900s, maybe I get back in in the 850s. I don't know. Uh, for Action Alerts, uh, we were talking yesterday on our conference call that that's the stock to buy if it does come in. Not down enough yet, but uh, the the downgrade to me had nothing new. Didn't account at all about Waymo with autonomous driving. Didn't account for all of the cleanup of the companies uh, that that they were uh, that were owned that were losing money. Um, so you, you look, it's a timely downgrade for a hedge fund. Not, it's it's an unimportant downgrade for a home gamer. And by the way, congrats on an incredible AAP call oh, yesterday. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we spend. Well, I mean, you know, that occupied a week for me, and I think that people who are members are so grateful, and it's fantastic. I really appreciate all when you go on Twitter and you say you love that. It, it means a great deal to me. And you can go to actionalertsplus.com yes. for more information on that. There's also a Wells Fargo note on NVIDIA facing more competition. Well, see, that guy's hated NVIDIA. I mean, he's got to sell on NVIDIA. So again, kind of like Google, what happens is, see, there's an arc to all of these. There's an arc. And the arc says, all right, these stocks have started to go down. I don't want to be affiliated with a bull case. I want to make the case that maybe these stocks ran too much. Those people then scare a lot of holders who don't realize, for instance, the NVIDIA downgrade contains a lot of information about possible competition. Mm. Now, the whole way it's up, we knew that there's possible competition, and this analyst fought it. But it resonates right now because the stock was weak after the Goldman target bump yesterday to 170. Mm. So you've got a lot of weaker hands in NVIDIA. This rotation is about shaking out the weaker hands who don't really know how well Alphabet's doing or NVIDIA. You'll see attacks on Facebook, even though D DJ Khaled was on talking about how great Instagram is. And I just think it's par for the course. You'll probably get a downgrade tomorrow for Facebook. And then we'll get a refresh as we get closer to the end of the quarter. People then will start defending. They would have defended, but you know what? The stocks bounced so instantly on Tuesday, on Monday and Tuesday that people were thinking, now maybe this sell-off is over. That was premature. The rotation came back. It was obviously waiting for the Fed. Um, I, and these rotations are very important for the following reason. Don't get sucked in. Unless you're a hedge fund and you want to scalp 15 points for Google, that's fantastic. Maybe even get 25. And I know that if I were at my old hedge fund, I'd be saying, oh, I can bang out Google here. I see a lot of bad hands in Google, and then I'll go buy it back. That's something for the very nimble. It will work. But that is not what I'm preaching. And you mentioned DJ Khaled. He, he told you about a lot of different investments he's you know, making. It's very interesting. Because he buys mansions. You know, mansions are what you buy. Uh, my friend Matt, in writing colleague Matt Horwein has always pointed out that uh, mansions maintain 
their uh, value even in hyperinflation. Very interesting. Now, I didn't get whether he thinks there's going to be hyperinflation, but <laughs> and I don't know whether he's subscribing and realizes that mansions hold the best value. That's something that even in Zimbabwe they held, uh, in Weimar they held. But what matters to me is, is that he is uh, calling for a, a, a calling for a nicer tone in social media. And he was talking about the idea of all the social media companies getting together to make it easier to link. Now, they won't do that because they're trying to destroy each other. Facebook obviously hates Snap and, uh, and Twitter. It's unlikely there'll be an alliance. So, But what he wants to do is make it so it can be more seamless. Uh, Zucker, Zuckerberg wants to make it so that you don't want to be anywhere else. Uh, it, it's seamless by having it so that everything is on Facebook. All right, back to stocks. Uh, what did you make of Kroger's lower guidance? You know, it's just not Kroger's time. Uh, Kroger had to cut numbers and didn't get the food inflation that a lot of people were looking for. But what people read through with that is, okay, Walmart's getting even more aggressive. This is the Walmart Amazon again. Target, by the way, remember Target has to be in there fighting for food share. Uh, and Walmart is being so aggressive on food, they're really just kind of using their balance sheet to eviscerate a Kroger. Kroger is such a good company. To see the stock down so much, now it did creep up two points, thinking that there would be food inflation and maybe Kroger would actually raise numbers, and maybe that the same store sales would be positive. They weren't. Uh, this also reminds me that if you're in Whole Foods, you better hope that Jana, the greedy bastards, according to John Mackey, the CEO, uh, can press and press and press because Whole Foods is too high off this. But what what this is saying is is that we've got to start thinking more about not just Amazon wrecking margins, but Walmart wrecking margins. Walmart is not giving food away, but they're giving great value. Costco is give, giving food away. Costco is selling food at cost. Uh, making the money up on the membership. Costco is a huge food seller. So you got Costco, you got Walmart, you got Amazon, you got Target. These were not as aggressive even a couple of years ago, except for maybe Costco. And Kroger, is. The, are they ready for it? No one's ready for it. All right, and staying with the consumer, there were reports of job cuts at Nike. Mark Parker, quiet man, uh, doesn't stand for underperformance very long. Mark Parker's Belichick. He's not going to allow that company to drift, and he's going to take radical action. Now, Nike is one of the best-run companies in the world, but Nike and Nike uh, sees that Adidas has come back. Nike knows it wants to keep the thumb on uh, Under Armour, but what Nike may have realized is it got bloated, uh, and it's not it's taking radical action. So that will drive the stock down, and then later on it will be up. Mark Parker is um, struggling right now. He, he won't stay struggling. All right, and then uh, we have the Corning Analyst Meeting on Friday. Anything you're expecting you there? Know, I want to hear more about what Apple's doing when they gave them a couple hundred million for American manufacturing. I believe the TV sales, screen sales are strong. That also be a good uh, read through, by the way, for 3M, which is doing incredibly well. Uh, I'm excited about what Corning has to say. They've been doing a lot of right things. Those of us who remember the great Corning of the 80s and 90s before things got in trouble um, are, are seeing a resurgence to that Corning, and I like it. Yes, and you mentioned earlier this week that 3M is a stock people go to when the Dow sells yeah, off. Yeah, and 3M is, I noticed, 3M has done remarkably well during this period, which is, again, let's just bring the Fed in. If the Fed's tightening, we're really hurting things. Why would the housing stocks be doing so well? Why would United Technologies be doing well? Why would Honeywell, why would Boeing be going up? And why would 3M going up? So I just think that the people who make these read-throughs from the Fed don't know the individual stocks. Now, let's be sure. I do not think this sell-off is over. I think that we have to see more whites of their eyes. 245 will be my tell. That is traditionally when I find out whether I think the market is going to stabilize. I'm sitting on my hands. We're looking at situations for action alerts, issuing some bullions about a steel company that I think is a great buy. But we're not pulling triggers because we're not done with the sell. All right, we will be watching for your bulletins on Action Alerts Plus. Jim Kramer, thank you. thank you so much. And for more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.